Hi, I'm Dr. Mitra, and I'm here to teach you how to complete a good pediatric physical exam in the emergency department. Our goal is to review 12 key tips and techniques to make your pediatric exam as thorough and efficient as possible. Are you ready? Let's get started. Establishing trust with your patient is crucial, and this starts the moment you walk through the door, so try to make a good first impression. Also, try to examine the patients in their parent's lap whenever you can. Have your materials ready and easily accessible before starting the exam. For example, have your otoscope, ophthalmoscope, and tongue depressor close and ready to use. Never ask kids permission to examine them because chances are they'll say no. Then you'll find yourself in a tough spot. Instead, give your patient choices. For example, when doing the ear exam, you can ask which ear they want examined first. Avoid doing the ear exam first, which can be difficult, uncomfortable, and cause your patient to lose trust in you. Start with the less invasive portions of the exam, like the heart and lungs first, and try to see things when you can. For example, if the patient cries during any portion of the exam, it's a good chance to see the oropharynx, so have the tongue depressor ready. Speaking of the oral exam, always use a tongue depressor when examining the posterior oropharynx. Patients might not like it, but lesions of the posterior oropharynx can be difficult to see unless you use a tongue depressor. For example, you may miss seeing vesicles in the back of the mouth in a patient with hand, foot, and mouth disease. No matter how hard you try to connect with your patient and start with the easy parts of the exam, some will be scared and nervous. In such cases, let them examine the equipment first by letting them briefly hold it or play with it. Another trick to use in nervous and scared patients is to perform a mock exam on something or someone else before first examining them. You can use a teddy bear, their sibling, or a parent so the patient can see that the exam is easy and harmless. After listening to the heart and lungs, you can use your stethoscope to palpate the abdomen, which your patient may have already gotten used to by now. While we're on the topic of abdominal exams, always perform a genital exam on all male patients presenting with abdominal pain, nausea, or vomiting. And that's because you don't want to miss a testicular torsion or hernia. Also do a GU exam on all patients wearing diapers to make sure there aren't any unexpected findings hiding under the diaper, such as rashes or signs of abuse. Just be careful not to get wet when doing the exam. If you think your patient has a muscular skeletal injury that they may be guarding, consider asking the parent to push on the suspicious area before you try. This will help give you an idea of the location of the injury. Last but not least, let's talk about the ear exam, which some find to be the hardest, but it doesn't have to be. There are many ways to perform the ear exam but with all of them, positioning is going to be key. 
One way is to have the parent to hold their child in their lap in an upright posture. The parent can use their forearms to stabilize the head and arms in a bear hug-like position. Have the parent relax the hand holding the head so you can check the other ear. There you have it! If you master these 12 tips and techniques, I can guarantee you will be able to perform a thorough and efficient pediatric exam in the ED. Good luck!